Okay, let's look at the position of a particle as it moves along an axis here. And so I've got a graph, and uh, let's just label these things real quick. This is going to be our velocity, and let's call this in meters per second. And let's call this one right here time in seconds. So this position, uh, some things that we need to understand real quick on position, and there's a couple different ways to look at this. Number one is that anything above the x-axis is often going to be referred to as a forward motion or a right motion. Okay, forward or right. Everything below the x-axis or your horizontal axis, in this case it would be t, everything below is going to be backward or to the left. So um, this isn't like your old-fashioned sense of, hey, we're going to shoot a cannonball off and look how the parabola traces where is your cannonball while it's flying through the air. This is more of how, just how is this particle moving up, down, left, or right. And so when we follow this graph, if you start here at, at zero, zero, we move forward or we move to the right for one second until we're going three, velo three meters per second. And then we start slowing down, and we're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and we're at rest here as we cross over the horizontal axis, and then we're moving forward again, but not forward, but this time backward, okay? And then we're at a constant speed right here where we're flat. This is a constant speed. Then we're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And then again, we're at rest and we change direction. We move forward, forward, and then we slow down, slow down, slow down. And finally, we end it right here at 10, where, where if we were to carry this on, we could say we were at rest if we stayed on the horizontal axis. So some of the a couple of quick questions then. Number one, where do we change direction? And we change direction at a specific point in time. You don't sort of go from forward to backward or kind of move from left to right. You either are moving forwards or backwards. You're moving left or right. So there's an instant, an instant of time that you are stopping and changing directions. And on these problems, that instant is where you cross your horizontal axis where you actually cross all the way through the axis. So you are reversing directions when t is equal to 2 and when t is equal to 7. You are reversing directions. Okay. What about where you're at a constant speed? Well, that is at the point where your speed does not change. Okay. Where you're moving, but your speed does not change. And so on this particular graph, where does that happen? That, that happens when we... Uh, get to this point right here at 3, and we have a constant speed to the point 6. So on that one, we would say when 3 is less than or equal to t, is less than or equal to 6. That, that would be where our constant speed is. Well, what about, let's say, part C. What if I asked about where are we increasing velocity? Where is the increasing velocity? or increasing speed. And, and on this, we're increasing our velocity um, from one to, let's see, what does that be? From, we're gonna increase our velocity from zero to one. Okay, we're increasing our velocity, and then we're slowing down, and then we're speeding up in reverse. So we are increasing our velocity, we're just going in a backwards direction, and so, the second part would be from 2 to 3, and then we're constant, we're constant, and then we slow down, and then we speed up from 7 to 8. So these are the points where we would increase our velocity. What about decreasing our velocity? Where would be decreasing our speed? Where would that, that particular point be? And we decrease our velocity when our velocity starts to approach that horizontal axis again, not run away from it. When we run away from that horizontal axis, we're going faster. When we approach the horizontal axis, we're getting closer. So we're actually decreasing our velocity from 1 to 2 and from 6 to 7 and from 8 
to 10. That's where we're decreasing our velocity. And so that's kind of how you can look at the position of a particle uh, as it's moving if they give you a position graph. It's a little bit different way of thinking about things, but it is very handy scientifically when you just want to know how, just how does the thing move. Is it moving towards me, away from me, left or right?